Hi everyone, welcome to our second slot with the great Professor Claudio Chili, who will appear from behind that curtain there in just a moment. <laughs> My name is Darwin and I'm lucky to be the chair of three great BCS groups. And if you're not a member of BCS, do check it out, the British Computer Society, and do join because then you can be part of all the fun and the heat generating efforts that are going on here and also the networking and the food and drink that will take place later the south and north and central london groups are very active we have lots of initiatives and we have people with lots of initiatives so if that's you hey maybe that's the reason why you should get in touch with us as well but let's come back to this evening a number of my committee colleagues are here with me you will meet diana i'll tell you that david is doing the actual recording and so on the zoom recording and will package the video and make it available on youtube later we also have anna who people in the room have seen already because she registered you as you came in so that's just a brief introduction to my much more extensive committee for these two great groups three great groups i should say but great is a word that i will use in profusion for the next few minutes firstly i'm going to introduce you to my great colleague diana who is going to introduce you to our great speaker, and then come back to me. So, Dan, tell us, who is this Professor Claudio? What is he? What is he doing here? And why? And can we identify him by the jacket and tie? Yeah, that's the easy way to identify him. He might be a cyber mm, shady character, but we know we have the visual in, visual information here to be able to identify him clearly. So Diana, who is he? Thank you, Valen, for that introduction. Um, as Valen mentioned, hello, I am part of the, I am a, also a committee member. And I am, my name is Diana, <coughs> part of BCS. Um, as Valen has mentioned, unfortunately, Claudio has another jacket today, but I'm sure you will see him straight away. He's one, he's an amazing person, and he came all the way from Rome just to see us in for these two days. He's a university professor and researcher, first of all, for the University of Rome, and also a fellow member of BCS. He's recognized as a world leading authority in the areas of national security and intelligence, company protection, information system security and compliance. He has over 25 years of experience and multiple certifications in auditing, governance, risk management, information system security and cybersecurity. He currently advises governments and international companies in cybersecurity and in the protection areas of critical infrastructure. Among others, he's a consultant to the United Nations, as well as the US government and companies who supply the Department of Defense. In his work with the big firms, he's responsible of information systems audit and security projects, which include <laughs> civil and military sectors, software quality and code security, Security of the information systems and installations. Dalim, wow. please tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, how can you follow that? Firstly, thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> but as you may or may not know, you will see and hear more of Diana later because she's keeping track of your questions which you're putting into the Q&A or chat and she'll pick those up with Claudio after his talk. So now we're equipped. We know that cyber attacks, which we heard about yesterday, come in various types and sizes and places and all that sort of stuff. We know that they're often hard to recognize. We know about cyber mules. We know about cyber lots of things. And we know that it's a dangerous world we move in. Well, tonight we're going to explore more on this theme of a dangerous world to move in. 
because tonight's event is about cyber warfare. And of course, we've been hearing rather a lot about warfare recently, haven't we? Including cyber warfare. So tonight, we will hear more in-depth things about cyber warfare, how you combat it, and also about APTs. APT? Hmm. I wonder what they are. We will find out soon. Now, we're again really pleased to have our international guest speaker, who amongst his many accolades, his titles <laughs> and so on, includes one called CIM. <laughs> now, I wonder what that means. So, I'm going to reveal a different kind of Claudio, and I want you to help me to identify whether this is the real Professor Claudio Chile from the visual who's <laughs> So, over to you, <clears throat> possibly Professor Claudio Chile. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what I can build. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we haven't identified you. Oh, no, okay. It's me. Okay. It's Absolutely. You. Okay. Well, let's hear what you've got to say anyway. And meanwhile, you can tell us more about uh, what? CIA APT? APT is a reward program. When you go to sales bring, uh, yeah, you buy some item and then you, you get points uh, for the reward. Uh, <laughs> when you got enough points, 1,000, you get uh, those. APTs. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a dog? Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> right. So it's, actually, so it's actually like CPEs and CPDs. Yeah, it's not the same. Right. Yeah. Right. And this CIA, the organization that gives those? <laughs> yes, they are, yes, they are interesting. Um, oh, cleaning, uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably it's an organization you see nowhere and everywhere, is that it? <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, because everybody needs uh, to have uh, their house clean. Okay. Sorry, they are this is true. <laughs> CIA is a house cleaning organization. <laughs> <laughs> house cleaning housekeeper yeah. also, you know. Um, Mostly in your tails. Mostly in your tails. <laughs> oh, yes, the little bugs in the ceiling, for example. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Now, possibly, Claudio, I want to tell you something. This is not St. Paul's. It that is not. That is not. Definitely, this is not St. <laughs> okay. Please tell us more to justify us having you here as our star guest speaker. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you again for the presentation. Uh, thanks for the presentation. In summary, she said, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's true. <laughs> but I'm uh, young in my spirit. Okay? So I try to do my best to entertain you uh, with this presentation. It will be a little shorter, shorter than yesterday. Yesterday, we, I talked for one hour and 30 minutes this time. Tonight, I think the presentation will be a little bit shorter, leaving more time for you for, if you want, for questions and answers. First one, this is my hometown, it's Rome, Italy. And this is not uh, St. Paul's, it is St. Peter's. <laughs> <laughs> Just to point out the, the, the situation. <laughs> what we talk? <coughs> Yesterday we had a short, half short, a long overview on several attacks and the current situation. Tonight, I brought a case study where I've been involved to the to addressing and uh, learning, in particular for the lesson learned from these uh, uh, massive attack happened um, around ten years ago. Uh, it lasted for five years. It was a very strong attack, not the only one. It remained undetected for five years. And we need to think about it. And the answer may be in the Little Institute of uh, Baudrillard, another interesting book I recommend to read. This is Florence. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I use this as a divider in the various for the chapters of, our, of my presentation. 
What is the cyber war today? Nothing changed from the past. In the conventional war, we, they, use conventional uh, weapons, bomb, and other funny things to defeat the foreign enemy or the nation they wanted to conquer. The history and evolution changed the way how the war have been combated, but the objectives still remain the same. Now, the objective is still the same, to defeat a population. Only the means change it. Today, the, weapon, the weapons are the information. Overflowing or negating an information, mostly the easier is to overflowing the target with information, creates the same or a bigger effect than a uh, conventional weapon. Better effect, because no destruction. Only moving the population towards the party we want to move them. So the, this one is much more effective rather than in the past. And this is where we are now. We are under a war. We are in war. I am not talking on what happens in Ukraine and the other uh, countries in the world where the conventional wars are still <coughs> ongoing. We now, in this moment, are under a war. Because every information is stolen, people, um, groups, are thinking and planning what to do with information that they gather from us. And in a subtle way, they are moving the way we think. So consider how critical and important it is. However, it is almost impossible only China succeed and not totally in preventing people in the North Korea as well, but they are the, the only uh, situation where the uh, population is kept aware, unaware of information. In any case, even in China, using the satellite or underground means, it's still possible to access to the information. So was the lesson the criminals learn. Overflooding our brains with information is much better than negating the information, access to information. Because, I'm sorry to say that, our brain is very limited. In particular, mine, I have a big head and a small brain. Nature was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, couldn't have balanced the, the, how to fill the brain. Yeah, the, um, that's cool. Um, our, the, our brain is very limited. It's, compa it's comparable uh, to a uh, 14 bit. 14 bits PC, less powerful than this. So it's easy to overflow. When we fill the brain with information, the, the, um, the brain stops elaborating, stops processing, and tries to recall past memories. This is done, the, my, our brain has been studied. This is done by the inner part of the, of the brain, the, um, the gangol in the middle. There are some specialized, the, the, um, uh, the name is Epocam, in, uh, uh, I don't know, if probably the same. It's uh, deputed to the first processing. The information comes inside, and the first screening is done by the Epocam. Unfortunately, the Epocam is very limited, small, and everything comes inside. So, overflowing is the new frontier of the world. And we need information. Think about this. Our life, our life will be almost impossible without mm -hmm. those. Everything we do, everything we do online today. Mm -hmm. But working online exposes and exposes ourselves to a lot of risk. 
What is it? It's a kid. It's a it's an innocent picture posted on Facebook. But the car and the right is there, giving information about about, about him. Those are uh, celebrating him because finally they were able uh, to sell their house. But I know where the house is. This baby is outside. All pictures are in Facebook. I see number, street number, papers, journals, the mailbox is full, meaning maybe she's alone. She has been left alone for the morning, for example, and, uh, uh, and you may not write. So I know if I want to wrap in this house located at 11.27, I have to do that in the morning. Check People is a system to uh, locate um, uh, people when paid using a credit card in a parking lot in the USA. So checking this side, I know where and when you park your, your car. This is a Google Street. You see the car with the antennas. Unfortunately, this person is still visible. What do you see into this picture? It's not a movie. Nothing in particular. Maybe it's a small explosion, bump, some fire from a gas uh, well. Nothing in particular. This experiment has been uh, transmitted uh, a few years ago by uh, Czech uh, National Czech Republic Television to, uh, to look what would happen in the population of the um, you know, very sure watch the, those, uh, those uh, movies. You live, it's still visible in uh, YouTube. There are a lot of uh, confusing words in a strange language, not Czech, something uh, completely understandable, but the words bomb, atomic bomb, are clearly distinguishable. At the end of the movie, the population went in panic and assault the supermarket. No one thought, no one used their brain to distinguish this is not a nuclear bomb. This can be anything but a nuclear explosion. The brain was so impressed by the authority of the television to follow the instruction without thinking. It's very easy to stop our brain uh, from thinking. And there are people who never think. <laughs> it's much easier to do that. This is a movie, but I don't want to waste the time. <laughs> the social networks. A group of people connected each other. Nice. We can share experience. How many social media? Not only Facebook, but there are a lot. This is similar to a picture I showed you yesterday. In, consider someone posting a um, phrase or a, a message on Facebook, or even an intimidating message. Immediately the message appears on the connected people the friends. This happens after a couple of seconds. Then many of those repost the same message because they are common habit to retransmit, to repost, to share without thinking again. <coughs> after 
1.2 minutes, 5,000 computers have the information. Even it's fake, because people don't think, don't analyze, simply the post. It's an experiment we did at the university, in my university. We start in this and with the chronometer check the propagation speed. After two minutes, 350,000 350, PCs were affected by this information. <laughs> Have you seen a bomb or a conventional weapon able to reach in three minutes, in 2.4 minutes of the entire world? This is why the information was a warfare is more effective than the conventional one. So after the introduction, problems again. Some problems are to be considered, need to be considered, both from the proliferation of weapons and juridical issues posed by the cyber weapons. First of all, developing a cyber weapon is really cheap. So every nationality, every country, everyone can develop or simply use a cyber weapon. I met yesterday I mentioned the Metasploit, High Pink, uh, Wild Shark. Those are potentially lethal weapons, freely available. You just need a very basic information system uh, knowledge to use them. Developing bigger uh, cyber weapon takes no fee, no budget, only some time. And the weapon can strike everyone, everywhere, every moment. Other problem is, and during the example, everything will be clear. It will be clear under our eyes. The tendency is, this is not my problem. <coughs> English say it's not in my yard. This is not my problem. Cyber war, information theft, it's not my problem. It's a government problem. So a meeting to help, to consider they are the target. Cyber threats is a problem of ministries, not their problem. Cyber attack, what is a cyber attack? Have you ever seen a cyber attack? Have you ever seen, have you ever seen a cyberman or a cyber cop or a <laughs> cyber? So people, so simply people think this is a sci-fi movie. There's a tendency. The, en the enemy is now here. And we, they say we, we simply don't want to see. This is the threat landscape by <coughs> ENISA, the European Agency for Cybersecurity, showing, clearly showing all attacks are raising, are increasing. Just the ransomware and the massive cyber spinach are slowing, but the most of are dramatically increasing. Because, because it's easy to access to a tool. HP or HP3, two lines of code, two lines of code are enough to start a DOS attack. So, what are the, the problems? There's an exponential increase of numbers of attack. Exponential means about, in this moment, today, about of uh, 100,000 attacks have been recorded in register. One, zero, zero, plus other three zeros. It's the number of attacks. Maybe 50% of 
have been unsuccessful, but the other one were successful. The number of actors, activists, company to company, cyber warrior, the, the quality of attacks is increasing. Other issues are, this is why we are, it's hard to, do, to fight them. Attack over defense. Supremacy of an attack over defense is a strategic issue, not clear in terms of cyber attack. How can you re respond to cyber attack with another cyber attack? Counter attack in, in cyber terms is possible. I am a targeting of a DOS attack and my response is to create a to attack, to use the, the, those attacks against the attacker is impossible. Traceability, they can be everywhere, using service, servers everywhere in the world. No deterrence, no law, no organization, no sharing of information. What is a cyber attack? No legislation in the world takes the cyber threat as a potential threat, as a um, something to be considered in the legislation. What is the battlefield? But from a, from a, uh, a legal point of view, the information is unmaterial. So it's impossible to prove the information. I was flooded of information. What does it mean? <clears throat> From a legal point of view, it means nothing. So the legislation uh, cannot help us. This is where we live. Some attempt in the past have been taken to regulate in somehow this problem. The Terran manual, now on version 2.0, is a, you know, is a, <laughs> A sort of uh, uh, collage of uh, the various laws and regulations in the various uh, issues in the various parts of the world as a compendium, but it's just uh, a list of laws, of various laws and regulations without a final judgment. After that, nothing happens. So it's time to go to Florence again. <laughs> How to defend? It's important to look as um, he was before. What we realized and what we know as for now, we are alone. No aid from the state, from the government, from the legislation. The attackers are always present and the attacks are continuing. There's no stop in between. The only chance and possibility we, possibility we have is to understand how the attack works and try to organize our defense. So it's time to look inside. All attacks follow the same general uh, organization. Repair the exploit. Obfusk or uh, organize the, the, the vector, for example, Corshell on the other. Look to the target, get information to the target, and deliver the weapon. So all attacks follow, this is a practical example, is the, uh, I will explain better in, later on, follow the same but I have a weapon. I modify or disguise the weapon in another tool, in another bag, in a bag named Vector. Look and get information <laughs> from, the, from the target, about the target, to prepare the best package to deliver the weapon I have. 
the weapon is still the same. It's important to memorize this. The attacker don't change. The attackers don't change the, their arsenal. They only, they only change the way to deliver after a close study of the target, of the victim. Because we, it's important to understand all cyber attacks are coordinating. There is always a CC, Command and Control Center, or C2. No attack, even the simplest one, is alone. There is always a great mind behind to organize and to transform the attack in money, after all. Remember from yesterday, the objective of those people is to raise money. To raise money. They are not doing that for the glory. Time for glory is passing. Now it's better, it's better to be more realistic. They do that for money. To do that, to achieve this result, to achieve the result, the, a coordinator as a minimum should exist. All attacks are coordinated. Because we know that, <clears throat> what is the, our objective as a defender? To seek the coordinator, of course. Because the only chance we have to stop this flow is always the same. Bait an end user. Search the end user, the most vulnerable. Bait him. Impl implant, the name is implant. Deliver the implant, the malware, into the victim's computer to establish a channel towards the command and control center. At this time, the real attack starts. This is only the prelim preliminary phase, seeking the right person. The objective is to get data or whatever to destroy the computer and to transform the information or the uh, impossibility to get information to work into money. Everything is done by the common control center. This is again the flow of a, of a modern attack. Always, always the same. Bait the end user after selecting the right end user, not everywhere. That takes time. Exploit, download the backdoor, establish the channel with the uh, target, the, with the CNC, with the C2, and then start the real attack. Always the same. It's hard, <coughs> but we can try to establish some countermeasures. <clears throat> and now, let's go into the deep of this presentation, selecting a specialized group of attackers, the APT. APT is not the reward program as a term, but it's a, uh, it's a different acronym. It's a, it's a, it is for Advanced Persistent Threats. Very powerful, organized groups of attackers. <laughs> Because the APTs are the most dangerous enemies we have, we need to explore who they are, why they are motivated, why they are targeting us, and the effect of a possible attack. In general, all attacks start, those attacks, with fake sites or fake emails or other trick to bait the selected end user. This is a very simple weapon. Remember yesterday I told nothing new under the sea. Spam is old. Professional use of spam is the revolution. Fake site, using a fake site and is an old story. Famous was the Twitter account. A few years ago, um, a, a website named 
Twitter with not a W but a two B uh, was registered. Because it's so small, in your laptop or, or cell phone, it's almost impossible to distinguish a W by two, uh, two V. Many people clicked on the button on the um, on the mail on the side, click on Twitter uh, to check who I am. They simply clicked to the site at twitter.com and inserted their username and password. At the end, in a couple of months, this fake site was able to steal 300,000 300, identities. This one. <coughs> yeah, excuse me, Claudio. Very sorry. <laughs> I am a questionable attachment and I want to just say something to you. <clears throat> You've got little cards, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what we're going for? We're trying to get commercial and we want five stars, a five star review from you for this event. Not just now, but when we're finished, <coughs> we go out. I'm sure we'll get it, but I just want, wanted to jump in to mention that that's what the little cards are about. We really appreciate that, please. Yeah? Just a simple review. You know the sort of thing, seen them a million times, but we haven't seen one from you for this event yet. So let's make it a first or a 50th or whatever, whatever it is. Thank you. Okay, Fisher, uh, you know, after when, when you took uh, the uh, desk uh, operator at the end of the, That's of the right. desk, uh, That's please uh, write me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll stop being a questionable <coughs> now with the proviso. Don't click on the okay. Okay. Well, While we've interrupted, there's five questions in the chat. Promise. <laughs> But we can try. The best way to, de to react to the attack is to use this, the same weapons. <laughs> the approach to security today is exactly what Einstein said. Okay, uh, not the stupidity, but the approach is falling behind. Because what we do, again, the limit of our brain. What we do to counterfeit and to defend from attack? We figure a non existent enemy and dig our defenses. But think twice. If the enemy does not exist, why in the hell I have to dig a defense? To counterfeit a non existent person? Second, risk analysis. Everyone knows risk analysis. The risk is the um, the, uh, the, uh, the impact, the loss of uh, of the asset multiplied by the uh, probability, the annual probability of occurrence. Interesting. How you calculate the probability? Ah, oh, easy. The answer is, oh, it's, it's easy. I check uh, uh, how many times uh, the accident happens in my company in the last years. If my, uh, my uh, chief security officer says this, I immediately fire him. <laughs> so you are facing uh, experiencing the same problem for years only to get a statistics uh, to ask me uh, understand what the risk is. This is my style. What we need to do is to prevent the first occurrence of attack, not to get a statistic. So risk as an asset by percentage is exactly nothing. Once you know this figure, what to do with it? try to go to a slot machine or uh, on a lottery and use this. What do you do with this number? Just nothing. It's important instead to look at those and think this is a threat intelligence and try to intercept what they are thinking and preparing. Exactly in the same way they are looking to us, we can use the same instrument, the same tool, to look at them. Because the attackers, I know, 
are groups and they are probably located in several parts of the world, not in the same place, not in a house. They should have some way to communicate. Probably they use the same communication uh, means that we use. Facebook and social media, dark web and email. So we, are, we can use exactly the same instruments to look at that. This is a threat intelligence. Of course, you need expertise. The cyber security officer or expert needs to be expert in legal issues, <coughs> in investigation, in uh, cyber security, in the anonymity in the and dark web. But once you have those knowledge, you are well prepared to face the possible attacks. The approach is multi-level. Get information from the open source. If you consider something is not clear, something strange is happening, like the movie Ghostbuster, um, <laughs> it's time to investigate where? Into the deep web. And after investigating the, the deep web, you think it's better to go further, start the investigation in the dark web. But to be safe, this is my response. <laughs> okay. So if you are asking me what we can do, simply follow this. <laughs> and now let's start with the case study. APT. What they are. This is the evolution of the threat landscape. At the beginning, it seems uh, Jurassic, it's not only 20 years ago, we had the script kiddies, they did hacking just for fun, to demonstrate how good they were, and to seek for a job. Then money came into, the, into the, this world, and the attackers became organized and money seekers. Today, we are in the APT era. APT is an advanced persistent threats. Mostly are state sponsored or tolerated by states. They are using, they use always the same modus operandi. <coughs> this one, intelligence gathering as I showed before, initial exploration of the victim to prepare the vector, the attack vector, deliver, establish the CNC, deliver the vector, and start the attack. Always the same modus operandi. In fact, we are talking about this one. <laughs> the, next step, the next step will be the total world. Now we are here. <laughs> this is not, not a new word. In fact, the acronym APT has been first used by the uh, US Air Force in 2006. So it's a, it's, it is not new, but the groups are new. Advanced means because they are using the most advanced techniques and knowledge. Persistent because they can last undetected for years. I say years, not days. And because they represent a real threat. So that's the name. Who they are? We know who they are. When I see we, I mean, people uh, in, the, uh, in the, the intelligence field. We exactly know who they, who, are, who they are. In fact, they are numbered. Their names are APT1, APT2, etc. Today, there are about 50 APTs. I think about the major groups. They can be state actors, where directly the state and people in the state are are the APT. 
or state-sponsored actors, where the state officially is not involved, but allows those groups to work without any problem or providing um, the necessary <laughs> resources and that. Or non-state actors, where the state do not, the state that doesn't sponsor, but the state knows they are here and leaves them working alone. <coughs> you remember the bank phones of Angela Merkel? <laughs> now we know exactly who were. Is the APT28? Who did so? Who are anonymous? Stuxnet, ISIS. This is the modus operandi. Always, they always follow these steps. These steps. Only few details change. The details are the attribution. From the small details in the modus operandi, we can attribute, we can uh, check and know who they are. The example is taken my, from my personal experience. I've been for one year in the Middle East, in, the, in Oman, in the Sultanate of Oman, as a responsible of the cybersecurity of the Sultanate. And in, uh, during the, that year, I learned a lot of the APT and what they do. Why the Medio <coughs> Oriental? Because it's a perfect battlefield. All states in the Middle East are fighting each other. So the cyber war is a reality. <coughs> it's a very nice place to learn exactly what cybersecurity is. And the focus is on energy and in general utilities uh, companies. So we are talking about the groups located in this area. Other groups are in other countries. So surprisingly, Australia, Spain, Norway are uh, in the US, are states where the presence of IPTs is known, which doesn't mean in the other countries they are not. Maybe yes, or maybe no, or just a subsidiary are in the other countries. However, the, um, the greatest part of the group is, the, is in the Middle East. Who are they? Are? <coughs> the most famous, very quickly, Op Cleaver is a group located in the Middle East and probably in uh, Iran. Uh, they target industrial complexes, um, especially in the world of energy, mostly in the Saudi Arabia. Um, in particular, the SCADA system, the, uh, the software to control <coughs> the critical infrastructures. They have other names. The major operation was the Op Cleaver, named the Operation Cleaver. Uh, it happens in 2012, you know, the year when the cybercrime was born. Uh, the group is characterized by a specific tool derived by the famous or infamous uh, Zeus, the, the father of all malware. In fact, the tiny Zedabot is a variant of the Zeus. All tools are a variant of the original one of Zeus. They other, um, uh, use other tools, so maybe cats and PowerShell and Netcrawler. They're free available tools. Combined together, we have the, the weapon. Shafer performs operation mailing the strategic bodies amongst uh, everywhere. Why well, we need to take an account? You see this country, this dot, this, what are they? The, the, the company, yeah, yeah, energy company, British Petroleum, oh. the French Demoil, the Italian Eni. This is why we need to take them into account. We are target. The example. Japanese country and of course Middle East. This is why we need to consider them because they are targeting us. This is the major operation, the oil rig. 
It start, they started activities in 2011, but the Henri campaign started around 2015 and remained undetected until 2019 when I, when I went. But I was not the other to the fake. I just saw and you know, studied how to, uh, the proceeding and gave, and, and I gave an app in, uh, in rebuilding the system. Cadell is another group targeting government, government and private companies. Again, same group, different group because they're using different tools. Shamoon, only DOS and DDoS attacks. Rocket Kitten, another interesting group because of the operation are in Pakistan. They in Afghanistan, <coughs> in Yemen, and one of the most famous, the APT-28, also known as the Fancy Bird. First, it's important to notice they, because there is a state APT, they don't need to disguise themselves. They leave their, their signature. For example, the operational hamster is the label they left on the defeated computers. You know, you know that the pound is also the, um, a piece of the, of the chessboard. So it's easy to understand they came from the Russia, where chess is a national sport. Did you see the symbol? Put it upside down is the Z of the war in Ukraine. It's enough to locate them. Fancy Bears is active, the APT-28 is active uh, since 2011-2002. Uh, this is their logo, a polar bear plus the anonymous of VS Victory uh, mask, and is now known and proved they are part of a, um, a GRU, the old the KGB, the former KGB. Other feature they left during their attacks and they are active since 2007. What we know is they are linked to the Russian government. Same tool, same vector, same attribution target everywhere, and those are the major operations, including this picture, which is in their website. <laughs> those are the main operations. The Russian law, U.S. defense contractors, the, uh, the pound store, uh, the White House, the German uh, Bundestag, Angela Merkel, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, attack, the, the Democratic Party to uh, go ahead uh, Donald Trump for winning the election. Now it's, the official document has been released, so we know they were the actors. We exactly know who was behind the uh, Trump's victory. And the, uh, the Op Olympics to um, sabotage the, um, the systems, the anti-doping system, in order to have the uh, Russian athletes to win the Olympics. Unfortunately, they were disqualified as well. <laughs> what they do? This is the FPT domain. FPT domain, mostly in Europe, targets are there. Complicity of South America uh, countries, for example, to register fake site. What they they are, the approach to the attack is very easy. They register fake sites, mostly connected to NATO or the uh, OSCE, the Organization for Security Cooperation by the United Nations. Those are the fake sites, and those are the real ones. It's forbidden here, in these countries, in our countries, to register a website with the name is similar to an existing one. I cannot register coca-cola.eu 
because Coca-Cola already exists, so I cannot be the owner of the site. But a register in other countries can allow, so the connection of the group allow them to register those fake uh, domains. How can we know they are from Russia? If you look at the, uh, the payload, the tool, 60% of the code is in Russian, the locale is a Russian keyboard. The, the rest in English. Second, analyzing the, the tool, we discovered the compilation time are compatible with the time zone UTC plus three, UTC plus four, which are here, Moscow and St. Petersburg. Looking at the date, we, look, we, we discovered the compilation date are days from Monday to Friday. That means they are not Muslim. In the Muslim countries, the weekend is Friday and Saturday. So if the, uh, if the compilation time would be on Sunday, that means those groups is somehow connected to Muslim. These are the, the, same, the, um, the approach we use uh, to add, the word is to attribute the tool, so we use a, a verb, a, a specific verb, attribution, to attribute the, uh, the tool to the group. <coughs> well, this is the tool. Korsha, also known as a sovereignty, is a PowerShell tool. The objective is to contact and to service the channel with the, the C2C. Aristos <coughs> is the second malware downloaded to the victim. <coughs> the objective is to um, explore the systems, keylogger, <coughs> and to prepare for the next tool, which is Topsic. This is an implant, the resident software. The objective is to get the office document, office uh, login and passwords, look at the keychain in the computer, and the old date is the it is named a credential harvester because it once launched the old date, all password and logins in the computer are copied into a file and sent to the C2C. This is the Payload. And this is the code, part of the code, well, the header of the communication. Everything goes through the HTTP. Again, how to defend. <laughs> okay, and now let's go into the last part, into the uh, final. Uh, uh, um, the case study, the old rig. Let's start. The action took place in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, uh, a battlefield for a lot of cyber attacks. And the government agency of the utilities in Saudi Arabia uh, called for uh, assistance because uh, an employee in the ministry in the uh, information system and in the IT department, and notice that something strange again, a file with sensitive information copied in a hard disk where uh, it was not supposed to stay. So this raised the alarm in that guy, but he had no knowledge to investigate, so he asked for help. During the first uh, call, uh, we verified the environment and we discover the data analyzer, in particular the RSA uh, <coughs> that witness, was bought and installed, but only to few computers. The network world is uh, very huge, about uh, 10,000 computers. It's, a very, it's, a, it's impossible to reformat the whole network. So the, the, our aim was, although the that we uh, that we didn't was installed to identify the attack, the consequences, and reformat or clean only the, the affected computer, not all of them. 
because in, in this case, uh, um, an entire state uh, would be the thing. <coughs> this is the network. Very simple. Another problem in that country is the culture of information system is, and the information security is not high. So it is a, the battlefield is, quite, is a very easy. This is a typical uh, of the uh, Middle East mentality because they tend not to ask for help until they need. So they believe that this is the, the according, you know, um, with the information, the knowledge they have, this for those, for uh, IT manager is or was the best uh, configuration, the network configuration. Now, we, we know only one firewall in, for a uh, so uh, wide network is not enough, 10,000 PC. But they have a single firewall for, uh, to, to, uh, to govern the access from the internet and a uh, uh, simple firewall and a uh, DMZ, uh, DMZ uh, accessible through the firewall. The difference is only the IP address. The, uh, the, the address in the team, the, the MZ are 172200, etc. The data center have uh, the same range of addresses and the internal network different addresses. So they both belong to the uh, DMC. They consider this enough to the, uh, for, the security, for the security. Unfortunately, it was not. What happened? An employee during a, a maintenance routine discovered some feature into the log directory of the um, web server, the Internet Information Server. It's correct to have the logs in this directory because it exists. If you install the web server, this, direct, this directory is correct. It's not correct in the log. Uh, subdirectory to have pictures. So he, you know, uh, the alarm raised in the, his brain and he checked the, this is the crop six uh, JPEG. Opening the JPEG, the uh, Adobe Illustrator or something uh, uh, returned an error. So he was uh, smart enough to open the file using a, a text editor, and he discovered this is not a, an image, but a compressed archive using the RAR algorithm, similar to zip. The, the, the compressed files using zip or RAR, uh, all files have at the beginning and the other the name of, uh, of the file, this one, which is the sensitive document. At this time, the uh, employee has asked for it. This was a casualty. What we did, we looked inside the affected computer. Remember, repo is a server, is a, uh, is a file server, this one. Repo. <coughs> and the files are accepted, accessed through a uh, web interface. Inside the repo, we found normal files always found uh, in a uh, Windows directory, directory plus a, a, a file with a one letter name. If in a Windows, in an operating system directory, there's a file whose name is only one letter, it's suspicious, suspicious by definition. So, what we did, copy the file and run into a sandbox to check what is that file. So we discover the WXA is the infamous Windows Credential Editor, WCE. WCE is a tool able to modify the uh, Windows registry, the Windows uh, um, system log. You know, Windows, in Windows there is an event bureau and the event log. And each event 
uh, incorporates <coughs> the time, date, and the person, the author of the action. It's impossible to modify this log unless you use this uh, unallowed tool. Why the VCE has been renamed W.Excel? And what is that? It, this modified um, software creates a PMP1.txt file. Plus, because of, uh, you know, when we know who they are, the, uh, the groups are, I know this directory, the directory uh, email, sometimes some is a uh, uh, email directory is uh, linked to the uh, shuffle group so it's time to better me see oh, let's open the tmp1 file list of password password and credential stolen so what the w.xl does look at into the uh, event register, the log, <laughs> extracts the name of the users, and then starts another software to do a brute force attack against the user. At the end, we have the list of uh, username and password. The, the tool is, you know, is a John Ritter. The tool is start once the uh, WT knows the uh, uh, the logs we need and creates the uh, the name. After all, a person uh, or, uh, um, who uses these partners uh, deserves the attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not the, <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> under the line. Uh, the asterisk uh, uh, the start. Are there because this is the real name of the person. So for privacy, for privacy uh, I, I omit, but the, they use the, the, as a password their real name. <laughs> Please note the date. The archive are being created on 2017. And we were called to check on August 2018. Just one year. If you go back, we find evidence that the attack started in 2015. Well, no further. This is the Windows registry of events. You know, the, in, the, in Windows, the, uh, the events log, even in each event is classified by the four digit number. In this database, and um, and that cross reference to Microsoft. So, if you need to, uh, to check for a specific event, for example, successful login, just look for uh, 4624. If you need, if you need to for a successful login, uh, 4625. So, it's easy to select the events, even for the software. So, the software, the software selected the events and started the attack. What we, we see, this is the, a list of a failed login, and then 4625, and a success, successful login, 4624. This is the effect of the brute force made by the W.exe. Have a look at this. We know who is the, the target, and from where the tax comes. So the IP address is the repo uh, <coughs> server from where the tax came. While the station are using the HTTP, looking back at the logs, we were able uh, to identify which was uh, at that time the, um, the computer where the, the, the attack came from. So the computer where who dropped the w.exe was another computer named S4. Let's go into the S4. Two things, no notes. And you know, unless you have administrator privileges and you use a specific tool, 
it's impossible uh, to cancel the log of events. And as soon as you cancel, another event is created saying you cancel the old logs. So it's impossible to have empty this one. Very strange. Second, it looks like there are several processes running plus an attack. This is the target. 172 20 0 0 2 2 1 the uh, repo and something strange again the old net bios attack through port 139 you remember net bios and the it, uh, it was the system uh, um created used by microsoft to, to map uh network this net use path space x column it's a uh, semicolon, and you have the when I access drive X, in fact, I am accessing the external drive. There's a bug in the in the net BIOS allowing to mount without permission external disk. So this computer mapped the disk. So now we know how this computer was able to access the repo files, not through the web interface, but directly reading and writing into the ex repos are this everything automatically we need to go further now we know just a leg of the attack what as for did as for and this and now is the core of the of the few slides <laughs> left as for is a desktop belonging to a system administrator and allowed to access all data so it's a high level high permission level is a perfect computer to hack because if i control as four i control the rest of the network reviewing the indicator of compromisation and tracking through the net witness a number of session addresses used to access the system. That means those system has been targeted from outside many times. And at the end, someone from outside got the administration password from the TMP1 file. Again, have a look at the, at the log files. We identified another computer, a in. <clears throat> Wait, looks like looked like the computer where the first attack originated from Akimi to S4. When I conquer S4, in fact, I'm able to map all disks in the network and transfer the critical data into the external server. Akimi <laughs> is a perfect victim. It's a laptop belonging to a lead developer. That means I permission level, no security knowledge is a perfect <laughs> vacuum. It was identified from 10,000 people. The attack, the oil rig campaign identified five users with the proper characteristics, enough privileges, low culture, security culture. Let me, this is the information gathering, locate the right people. A massive attack, an email sent to everybody can be immediately noticed. Five emails these, to specific people got an higher chance to be successful. In fact, they were. What is into the dead computer? Have a look at that, but it's very, very interesting. In the Achimis laptop, there is a process running whose name is NVIDIA Update. We found two files right? to, um, to macros because of the VBS and the Visual Basics. The, uh, the NPS1 and the IPD that is, reminds the update. So I don't care on the update. Unfortunately, the computer did not make use of the NVIDIA graphic card. 
But NVIDIA update is a process. Well, there is a APD doc VBS does. <coughs> Creates a file named DN is one, who in turn create another APD dot VBS to spread to deliver to other computers. So the first computer, the whole story was the victim received a email with an attached Excel file with macros. Because the person was unaware of security issues, immediately after the question, uh, this file contains Mario, do you want to enable or answer yes? So starting the ps.apd with the privileges of the user, with the user privileges, high enough to deliver the, uh, the sum and the end point PS1 to the other computers. So this is the old story of back the end user. Again, yeah, it's interesting. The X file is executed, the macro are enabled, the victim is presented with, with the document. The victim, the mac, while the, the victim read the documents, the macro executes the APD with VBS, which attempt to download the file, the end is one, from an embedded IP address. The file, uh, from IPDWS is the end is one coming from this embedded external server and deliver to the computer to be uh, spread laterally movement the name is to other computers. And this is the process. At this time, we know almost the whole picture and I'm close to the end. Now we know the, what happens. Because it happens in many, several years before the investigation, we, uh, we couldn't get, uh, retrieve all the information, but that was enough to understand how to identify the victims. The victims were a processor named uh, NVIDIA Ted was running. So the initial belief was reformat those specific PCs where this process is running and this should be enough to clear the whole, the whole situation. And those is the story and the various IPs. <coughs> at the end, we add the final uh, uh, picture. The attack was sent to five users. This one. Only one opened the file but was enough to spread the, uh, the end point PS1 to ASFUR because ASFUR belonged to an uh, administrator that was enough to retrieve from the command center which uses uh, three IP addresses the rest of the tools, the, the Remax in particular to access, and to, Remax is, uh, is the NetBIOS uh, uh, malware to access the disk into the That's the whole story. Remediation. Five more slides and we are finished. It's the funny part. What about the remediation? After all eight days, the, we identified the affected computer and the, uh, the solution proposed was to reformat the computers running this that process. The client uh, was happy with this uh, uh, proposal because we didn't ask to reformat the whole uh, network. And it's under typical from the uh, from Arab, Arabic people, they were satisfied and simply they said goodbye. They pay and say goodbye without asking more. On the final day, while looking for the NVIDIA day, a strange process it was found it was found in another computer. The box driver. This is uh, the driver for the virtual box. Why this driver? And, uh, and um, 
uh, with the signature invalid was there. Again, there is something to investigate, but they didn't want <laughs> to continue the investigation. <laughs> In fact, this is an extra job we did. Looking at that computer, where there is, there's a strange driver was running, we found the other processes running. Virtual box and others with strange names. This RPC EPO Delt 1, again, is strange. In fact, they're strange. Looking at the database, those are the laser malware belonging to another APT group. The name is Epic Turla, based in the USSR. <laughs> but since uh, no traffic originated by this computer, although we understood it was infected, not affected, infected, the client decided, no, simply said, there's no traffic coming from this computer, nothing happened the last year, so it's better to leave everything up as it is. <laughs> Goodbye again. <laughs> Instead, that computer we discovered was running a lot of malware services. But apparently, nothing is happening, so the client was happy. <laughs> was happy to leave as it was. The good thing is, on the very last day, we stopped, we instructed the firewall to stop the connection coming from the three IP addresses of the C2 server. Remember this one? This one. So we blocked those addresses. <coughs> as soon as we blocked the addresses, the oil rig traffic going back and forth from those IP stopped. And another traffic arose. <laughs> <laughs> this was still working, but because this traffic was very, very eager, it was disguised, unnoticeable. Once it delete the red, the blue remains, and we demonstrate the uh, epic tool and the glazer software was not dormant, was not sleeping. It was. They were alive, the Glazer, they took the various tools so were alive and working. How? This time with a better system. They used the BITS protocol. Beware of this. The BITS protocol is much better than DNS. BITS is the protocol used by Microsoft to deliver the update, Windows update. The BITS protocol it's critical because it bypasses every control. <laughs> you cannot prevent the Windows updates. You can stop from updating, but when the update starts, your computer does, doesn't check from where the update comes from. <laughs> there is a collision in the authentication. It is a big, it is a very big flaw in the authentication uh, um, system of, used by the Windows client to the Windows uh, Microsoft server. So it's easy to use the BIS protocol uh, to deliver malicious uh, anything. Now all most of the attacks uh, and the, the payloads comes through the using the BIS protocol. This is the BIS protocol. <coughs> Two good things happened. First, Again, in the affected computer, once again, two files. This time, one W and two W instead of the W.exe. What they do? Exactly the same thing as before. Collect credential, embed them into a temporary file, and send the file outside. This time, a little bit better. First, because they use the BIS protocol to bypass the control. Second, that the, um, the credential was not written in plain, in a plain text, but encrypted using the uh, AES algorithm, 256-bit as a key. Thus, making an investigator believing this is a real cache. In fact, this is a traffic. Um, 
I skip them. It's exactly the same uh, modus operandi. Connect the sender, receive the payload, get the password, and send back. <laughs> the difference is the, the, the password file was um, put in the cache directory, encrypted. So if you open the, a cache file using a text editor, you get a scrambled list of uh, characters, which is correct. In fact, the cache is an understandable, is, is the dump of a memory, is a memory dump. So it's not suspicious. In the reality, this file, the HB, this one, look, HBE, local cache, it looks perfectly innocent. But if you open with the key, delivered through the bits protocol, this one. You open this and get again the passwords. So this is a step forward in same approach, a step forward in the uh, sophistication of attack. But again, same modus operandi. Recognizement, identify target, deliver the uh, email or something, and establish the C2C. This, belong, this one here is part of the, the authentication. They use the, the uh, OW authorization system as uh, the same mm -hmm. used by Microsoft to authenticate the client and the, uh, the update server. And this is in clear. No one can be suspicious about that. So I skip this, and this is the code. At the end, this is again the, the whole story. The Irish Turner did exactly the same different server, OWA, using the OW out system. This is the server. They get, got access to this using the same tools, same uh, approach, different methods. And they took advantage also from the previous attack, since the traffic generated by the Irish Turner was a hidden. Uh, mm, in the traffic generated by the mm, no, more, more noisy uh, oil rig chauffeur. So the lesson is, <coughs> do not assume remediation is a success. Do not rely that uh, unrelated infection should be investigated later, laterally. Investigate everything suspicious immediately. Don't assume a sophisticated attacker is limited to the use of specific infrastructure. In fact, Epic Turner took advantage of the existing uh, the, uh, attack. And do not expect Epic Turner, like other uh, Russian APT, behave like the other groups. So, <laughs> and close. Do you want to know what was the final result? To reformat 2,000 computers, <laughs> the, only, the only solution. This is the uh, quite technical uh, story of the Origa rig attack. What's the lesson? Again, this machine. <laughs> what's, the, what's the lesson? The tools are easy. PowerShell is a common line. PowerShell means a script using the cmd.excel with administrator privileges that this is powershell or if you want to do something more sophisticated the powershell there is also an editor to create such scripts but this is nothing it's just a script with administrator privileges all bait and other tools are scripts or existing tool for example john the Ripper. packed together create such a beautiful attack so the lesson is look at everything our brain uh, really at the end is uh, smart enough while the com our brain is a very limited computer on the other side and uh, what distinguish the humans from the from the from animals is because the, our brain is the only weapon we have we don't have angles, 
if you don't have strength, we cannot run. How oh, the humanity was able uh, to go on the top, to climb the evolution and to be on the top, because this is the only, the only weapon we have. The objective of the brain from the animal perspective is to alert the body about the danger. So when something suspicious happens, our brain immediately raises the alarm and rings the bell. Unfortunately, we do not listen to him. We don't listen to the brain. But the brain, there is something strange. If I'm, I'm not sure about this. This is a signal. So, please, when the brain transmits an alarm and rises an alarm, that means this is a real alarm and needs an investigation. This is the lesson, and the only defense we have. In other words, try to use the brain. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, and uh, I really hope you are watching.